here's some of what is in the wedge document. They promise to develop a positive scientific alternative to materialistic scientific theories, which has come to be called the theory of intelligent design. There is no theory, by the way. Design theory promises to reverse the stifling dominance of the materialist worldview and to replace it with a science consonant with Christian and theistic convictions. They also stated their goals pretty bluntly. There's two of them that they stated. To replace materialistic explanations with a theistic understanding that nature and human beings are created by God and to see design theory permeate our religious, cultural, moral, and political life. But remember, ID has nothing to do with religion. Purely scientific theory, and if you dare to question that, you are an anti-religious bigot. That's the line that they give you every time you dare to quote their own words to them on the religious nature of ID, they tend to come back at you if you're simply an anti-religious bigot. Uh, this despite the fact that many of the people uh, who are anti-ID are religious themselves, including several, some that we have here this evening. The Wedge document was a fundraising document. It was designed to encourage people to give money to the CSC, and so the best way to raise money is to pretend that you're standing up to the devil himself, you're on the side of God, and that tends to open up the pocketbooks of the faithful. So the document goes on and on about all of the evil things that evolution has caused. It's caused school shootings and uh, you know, rampant immorality and teen pregnancy. And Darwin apparently had an enormous impact that you know, none of us have ever uh, imagined. When they're talking to religious audiences, uh, they're quite open about the religious nature of the ID movement. Uh, Bill Dembski, very one of the top ID uh, scholars, a mathematician, philosopher, uh, a couple of years ago taught a series of Sunday school classes at a church in Waco, Texas. And there, he talked about what motivated him to fight evolution. And he said, as you can see here, his real opposition to evolution was that it was robbing God of his glory. In articles aimed at the faithful, he has said, for example, intelligent design readily embraces the sacramental nature of physical reality. Indeed, intelligent design is just the logos theology of John's gospel restated in the idiom of information theory. If that looks a lot like gibberish to you, it is. Uh, likewise, Philip Johnson, uh, who's the godfather of the ID movement, uh, the one that really sort of started it all in the mid-90s, uh, when speaking to his followers, he says things like, if we understand our own times, we will know that we should affirm the reality of God by challenging the domination of materialism and naturalism in the world of the mind. It's all about standing up for God, making sure God gets the glory, affirming the reality of God. Unless, of course, they're speaking to the media or to academic audiences. And then their tone changes completely. All the religion talk gets put away, and they pretend that idea has nothing to do with God at all. It's a purely scientific research program. And if you quote their own words to them, you'll be accused of being a liar, an anti-religious bigot, whatever. It's quite a little deceitful game they have going, which is rather ironic given that they think that evolution causes immorality. Uh, and we will see much more of this as we get to the trial. The first thing that needs to be said about the Dover trial is that it was inevitable. It was going to happen somewhere. It didn't have to happen in Pennsylvania, but it had to happen somewhere. In fact, it very nearly happened here in Michigan. Um, we had a case that came up around the same time that the Dover situation was coming up in Gull Lake, about an hour south of here where two seventh grade science teachers were teaching intelligent design mixed with old fashioned young earth creationism uh, in se seventh grade science classrooms. Uh, we get a call from a parent, uh, daughter of a biologist happened to be in one of these classes, uh, brought home some of the handouts and the biologist's father wasn't pleased. Uh, so he called Michigan Citizens for Science, um, which Greg and I are on the board of. Um, and uh, we got involved, got in contact with the uh, school board and the school administrators and you know, basically told them that you're headed for trouble here. You're headed for legal trouble. And they fooled around with it for a few months. Ultimately, they came to their senses and at a school board meeting decided to tell the teachers you can't teach this anymore. Um, that case it technically is still going on. We, we won that battle. We got it out of there. Uh, but it may still come to a suit. But uh, had, it, had they not made that decision, we might well be here talking about the Gull Lake trial as the test. From the beginning of the intelligent design movement, everybody on both sides was waiting for a test case to get into court. And of course, we wanted uh, the facts of the case to be as, as favorable to our side as we could. And the Dover case, as we'll see, was really favorable to our side. 
Since the late 1990s, the Discovery Institute had been going around the country trying to get school boards and state legislatures to put ID into the science classrooms under a variety of different labels. Uh, Michigan Citizens for Science and other groups have successfully fought off no fewer than six bills in the last few years here in Michigan that would have put intelligent design into the science classrooms under one label or another. Um, in fact, we just uh, stopped one last fall with the State Board of Education where they tried to get ID added to the science standards. At the same time the Discovery Institute was doing this, another group called the Thomas More Law Center was doing the same thing. Now, the Thomas More Law Center was founded by uh, Domino's founder, Tom Monahan, who, of course, is a Michigan boy from Ann Arbor, and that's where the Thomas More Law Center is based. Uh, uh, Tom Monahan is a frustrated priest, uh, an extremely conservative Catholic, uh, who has funded a whole range of religious right activities, including this one. Thomas More folks were going around the country around the same time that the Discovery Institute folks were trying to get school boards to put ID into science classrooms, but they were more specific than the DI folks. They actually had a specific book in mind, and that book was called Of Pandas and People. Uh, there we go. Uh, that is uh, the first, uh, the Discovery Institute calls it the first intelligent design textbook ever written. came out in 1987, and we'll get into that a little more later. Um, they were going around the country, they went to Minnesota, they went to Virginia, school boards wouldn't bite. They sweetened the pot a little bit. Not only do we want you to teach this, we'll defend you in court for free if you do. And Dover was the first school district to bite. Uh, they wanted to get creationism into the science classrooms. Thomas More comes in with his book of Pandas and People. They get it put in there. Now, as I said, both sides are looking for a test case. Both sides want a case that is where the facts are most favorable to our side. And as the Dover School Board began making noises about adopting an ID policy, it quickly became obvious that the facts of the case were very favorable to our side. Uh, in the final ruling, Judge Jones, in an unusually blunt statement, referred to the breathtaking inanity of the school board. Uh, not the sort of language you typically see at a federal court ruling. Uh, but the facts were just so completely against them that it's just staggering that they didn't see it. Uh, so let's meet the members of the school board that passed this. It's a nine-member board. Alan Bonsell was the chairman of the board. Bill Buckingham was the chairman of the curriculum committee. Uh, Angie Yingling, Sheila Harkins, Heather Giese, Jane Cleaver, Noel Weinrich, and Carol and Jeff Brown. And these two are very interesting. The husband and wife team that was on the school board. When that policy was passed, they were so upset they resigned from the school board and ended up being plaintiffs in this case. Ended up suing the board they had just left. Um, the first two names in the list, Bonsell and Buckingham, I refer to them as the Tweedledum and Tweedledumber of the case. They were the primary agitators. They really, really wanted creationism in, in, in science classrooms, and they pushed really, really hard to do it. The problem was they just said one stupid thing after another, and were constantly getting themselves in trouble. And this started about uh, January 2002, just after Bonzell had been elected to the school board, started pushing to get this in, uh, and again in 2003. And then in 2003, the science teachers began asking the board for new science textbooks. The textbooks they had were very old. Um, worn out, some of the information was outdated, and that became the pretext for Bunsell and Buckingham to change the curriculum, now that we're getting new textbooks. Uh, the Chinese teachers asked for a textbook, Prentice Hall Biology Text, written by Ken Miller uh, and Joe Levine. Uh, ironically, uh, Ken Miller ended up being an expert witness in this trial. Uh, and basically what the school board did was drew a line in the sand and said, we won't buy you new textbooks unless you use Of Pandas and People, as a supplemental textbook and put that into the classrooms. And that didn't go over real well with the teachers. Bill Buckingham uh, made all sorts of statements during the uh, various talks at school board meetings about, um, <laughs> about what would happen, and you see a couple of them here. Um, as they were debating this at one of the meetings, he said, 2,000 years ago, someone died on the cross for us, and it's time to take a stand for him. This country wasn't founded on Muslim beliefs or evolution. This country was founded on Christianity, and our students should be taught as such. Now, here's the funny part about this. He was, these were such a problem for the ID side that uh, he lied and said he didn't say it. They'd been reported in both the local newspapers. All of the other school board members and people who were at the school board meetings testified under oath, yes, we heard him say these things, and he said, I never said them. 